some of you might recognize that book, huh? Anyway, this is the magnet from that small free energy coil that's got the smaller coil that comes up off the center of it. Uh, and then two alligator clips off the ends and a load connected across the clips. So this is a magnet out of a hard drive. It's about an inch and a half from end to end. It's about a half inch wide this way. Uh, it's very thin. That's uh, maybe uh, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. And the backing plate is also about an eighth of an inch thick. This uh, magnet is actually a horseshoe magnet. It's got both poles on this one face. There's a north and a south on this face and it creates a uh, a very tight field right here that fluctuates as you can see with this magna probe. It's got a red and a blue uh, painted end and it's just a piece of steel ma mounted on a gimbal uh, that allows for 360 degree motion. But you can see it allows you to see kind of where the fields are. And curiously this field actually is distended over this way quite a ways. I hadn't noticed that before. This way being off to the side from it. You can see it's still affecting the magnet. Alright, let's try it from down and in front of it. So you can see what that field looks like uh, from the side. So here's the south. I'm going to go over. You can kind of so straighten that up. You see there's a point right there where it just snaps. That point is probably where that coil that's sticking straight up on the other coil that's going horizontal uh, is located, most likely, I would expect. The other curious thing, dang it, to note is if you go underneath this and try and run it, there's not much of an attraction. You can see it's kind of shunted on this side. There's no tight snap, it's loose, kind of wobbles as compared to this side, which there's no wobble, it's in tension. The lower it gets, the tighter that tension and the harder that snap. Right across, there's a plane right here that shifts in between the poles and the plane that generates down here on this flat U-magnet, which makes you wonder if an actual U-magnet would work there because you could just use the U-magnets and two ends come up, run them across a coil and run another coil off the top and that might emulate this, except it wouldn't be probably a Neo U magnet, which means the field shape and density would be different. So I'm not sure exactly how that would end up. But I mean, this you can see that it affects it affects the actual magna probe a good couple inches above, at, at least out to the point where you know the the magnetic fields split plane here is maybe sitting on that small coil causing an increase of velocity the closer it comes down into this tension area and then when it gets down to the tension area it bifurcates off either end of that coil part of the energy goes off to the south part of the energy goes off to the north and out it goes into the load to recombine and work provide work as the light so uh, it seems clear it seems like it's pretty probable though so be curious to see how that works and uh, if you think about it, so that small coil acts as the higher velocity coil and it goes into the larger diameter coil which must, <clears throat> due to the larger diameter, the larger inductance relative to the tupper inductance that coil's got to slow down those flows creating a kind of a breaking or a resistance as they as they come in and separate out either end of the coil. Hmm. Woohoo! Anyway, yeah, stuff to think about. I'd be real curious when that works for you, Luther. See you, dude.